Hello and welcome along to episode 55 of the All Things Leeds podcast with myself, uh, Ed McIntyre, and joining me, as always, is my co-host, Charles Foster. Hello. Hi, mate. You all right? Yeah, you? Yeah, a bit of chore getting here, but other than that, it was, <laughs> it's pretty good, yeah. Did you have a good weekend in yeah, London? Yeah, I had a class weekend today. Yeah, a bit of a trip away. Plus, the results really cheered me up down south as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Especially because a uh, few Fulham fans in the pubs down there, so it was nice rinsing them a bit, <laughs> at the risk of my own personal safety. <laughs> <laughs> um, also joining us in the studio is Lee's fan, friend of the show. He's also a writer for the All Things Lee's website. He's an aspiring sports journalist. It is Johnny Chick. Hello. I am putting your microphone up. Hello. Try it again. <laughs> you all right? <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, good, thanks. Brilliant, brilliant. It's really, really good to... Finally meet you. I'm yeah, right for all yeah. Things. I really do appreciate all the work that you do. So it's fine. Cheers. I've been bright for a while. So yeah, nice to nice to come on the podcast. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, also joining us in the studio is another Leeds fan, friend of the show. Uh, you might follow him on Twitter. It is Barney. Hello, Barney. Hi, mate. You Thanks all right? for having us. No, brilliant. No worries, no worries. Really, really good to, to have you on. Really do appreciate uh, you two coming on uh, this evening. Uh, of course, coming up on the show, uh, we'll be looking back on last Saturday's game, which saw Leeds United beat Bristol City 1-0 at Ellen Road. Uh, we'll also look at some uh, other on the ongoings at Leeds United. We'll discuss the Young 23s and Foreshaw's injury and ticket price as well before looking ahead to Leeds United's next game, which sees them take on Reading at Ellen Road this Saturday. It's the All Things League podcast. <laughs> Uh, straight on to last Saturday's game then. Leeds United, of course, beat Bristol City 1-0 on the road. Uh, Barney, I'll come to you first. This was probably the most convincing 1-0 win ever. It was It was back to the first few games of the season. Dominant everywhere on the pitch. Um, I think Calvin Phillips was the main reason why we looked so dominant. Everyone looked so more confident at the back and also going forward as well. It was just... It reminded me very much of the Arsenal game where we were just we were into every tackle and we just from tackling we we're going straight forward. It was just fantastic, really. Yeah, I mean it was a bit unfair because a lot of people have said that we should have scored some chances, but their keeper was on fire as well. To be yeah, honest. absolutely. Yeah, Daniel Bentley, Brentford, mm. uh, Bristol City's goalkeeper. It, it, it was fantastic. Made yeah. so many vital saves at times, mm. didn't he? I mean, a lot of people say they saw that thing on our Twitter with. Um, Bamford in should have scored here, but to be honest, the, the goalkeeper made the goal. He was big in the goal in the goal, so he didn't really have much choice. Yeah, no, the cost chance as well. Yeah. He got back well to, to make like a good he, save. All of a sudden, he was like nine foot tall or something. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> fantastic, uh, Johnny. I wouldn't say Leeds United were back at the best, but we certainly weren't far off, were we? No, yeah, it's like what Barney said. We were back to like how we were at the beginning of the season, especially like Phillips coming back in. It almost seemed to give Cooper and White that bit of reassurance at the back as well. Because I think it was against Nottingham Forest when Ben White sort of just was in that sort of Phillips role and he was spraying balls and they weren't always going that wide. But yeah, we were we were definitely back to our best. We were just it was just wave after wave after attack. And even for the goal, it was like we're gonna score at some point here. Yeah. Because it was they just weren't clearing their lines and we were coming back at them. And even I think we saw the best of Jack Harrison that game as well. I think mm. he was really good. Like his first touch is one of the best in the league. Yeah. Like Leeds fans recognise that, but he was getting to the byline, cut. And obviously, they don't always reach Bamford, but I mean that chance he had at the end where he hit the bar. That's not a bad shot. It was actually like just yeah, good know, effort. Yeah, it was a good effort. So yeah, we were definitely back to our best. Yeah. Really good through ball for, from Stuart Dallas there as well. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, between the lines. Yeah, I mean Charles, it seemed like we were unbeatable at times in that in that game, weren't we? Well, you can, you're never unbeatable at one 0 <laughs> <laughs> No, as we found out against Forest. But the Darby. football that we were playing, though, we, you just felt like you know we were always going to win. Yeah. Um, I was the minimum amount of worried I can be when we're 1-0 up, you know, because of how well we were playing. Like, and sometimes you're 1-0 up and you think, right, this, I can feel it here, we're going to concede. Um, but, yeah, I was I was never overly worried um, beyond the kind of standard kind of Leeds fan anxiety you always have when you're watching a game when you're 1-0 up. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so from what I saw on the, sh- on the, the really dodgy stream <laughs> of the game, we, we were just really dominant and we um, become a bit more... Got a bit more tactical know out at the end of the game, particularly when Jamie Shackleton came on and him and Jack Harrison were kind of, kind of um, waiting the clock down and wasting time a bit more, because you know, <laughs> during the Birmingham game where Alioski ninety first minute, where <laughs> we're one goal up and uh, he's you know off on the left wing, off and down a run down the line, when if you one if you one goal up in the ninety first minute, you should everyone should be in your own half. Yeah. So yeah, there's a bit more kind of tactical now about it, and yeah, it was I was. 
I was content. I was very content <laughs> at, at the end of um, at the end of the game there, particularly given how well everywhere, everywhere else in the league went. Yeah, of just course go, it was. Uh, sorry, just going to see your point about the, the tactical bit was that the fact that we had actually um, players on the bench that could make a difference as well. Which so we actually saw the game management we've been seeing during the course of the season. Over the last few games, we've not seen that because of injuries, but we had to actually had a stronger bench, which I think made a difference. Yeah, we had a really strong, strong yeah. bench, didn't we? Compared mm. to the recent few weeks, we've just been seeing all the kids on the bench, yeah. haven't we? But it was a really strong bench um, on Saturday. Of course, an unchanged lineup from that 1 1 draw away at Brentford. Uh, Barney, is this for you now the 11 that need to be starting week in, week out? You know, Dallas at left back was fantastic. Cal Phillips in his midfield role, brilliant as always. Is this now the, the starting 11 that we need to use? Because they just seem to gel so well, don't they? Definitely. I think it was the first time I've seen in a long time where the, the team looked balanced throughout. We had balanced wing-backs, uh, the midfield. I mean, Klitsch and Phillips, just a fantastic pair. I, I said on Twitter after the game, and a couple of people laughed, but they actually remind me of um, Batty and Decor in midfield. They complement each other really well. And going forward as well, I think Pablo could be the sticking point for me. I think he had, he had a few good spells during the game against Bristol, but he's not the player... He was last season, yeah. and I think we were expecting that because he's what thirty-five now, isn't he? Thirty-four. Thirty-four. So I mean, he's not he's not done what he was what he was doing last season. He yeah. scored was it ten goals or something with the yeah. silly amount of assists ten as well. Goals, ten assists, I think he got. Yeah. yeah. So we can't I, rely on him anymore, can we? We can't. And I I've always been a big believer that uh, Tyler Roberts would be in that would fit in that role straight away. Yeah. So that's the only sticking point. I think we need to use Pablo sparingly this season yeah I've I think oh sorry I think there's like that debate obviously between Augustine or Augustine and, and Bamford but I think Bamford had one of those games where even though he didn't score and people obviously are going to slate him on social media for that he had that chance that Bentley saved really well but he had one of those games where he actually played well but just didn't score like mm. people obviously say oh he didn't score so he didn't have a great performance but he had like that turn away from the defender on the left hand side he then slipped after that but then he played that good through ball afterwards. Yeah. Like he actually, the movement and hold up play was actually quite good from him. Yeah, he had another good game. But I was listening to the uh, Ellis Eleven podcast this morning, and what they were saying is, you know, with Bamford's movement, and if he could score twenty goals a season, he won't be playing in the championship. Yeah. You know, we, we you know, we've, we've, no, yeah, yeah. you know, we've, with some players in the championship, you're going to have to expect some flaws. And unfortunately, Bamford's flaw as a striker is he can't score goals, which is, which is quite <laughs> annoying. He's, he's always been one of those sort of players that doesn't score a lot of goals, and then all of a sudden he'll go on a run. And I think that's what a lot of us are hoping they'll go on that run. But yeah. that, if you've got Big Kev on the, the bench, and when he came on, every game he's coming on, he's looking a little bit more sharper. I mean, Phillip, Phillips went on a run, didn't he? And he went onto the wing, and he was actually mo- asking him to move forward yeah. a little bit. And it was it literally inches away yeah. from going in. He hit the side net, and yeah. I thought he was and in. All he, yeah. all he needed was one touch. Yeah. I, was, I was gutted he didn't score that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but that you could see the difference between Big Kev and Bamford, where probably Bamford would probably need to take a couple of touches, but Big Kev, bang. Yeah, of course. Uh, bang, that's quite a good chance. <laughs> <that. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, of course, Augustine did come on uh, 75 minutes to replace Bamford. I mean... He does look good. You can tell that he needs a lot more game time because he does seem a lot... I mean, he's certainly not unfit, but he, he looks unfit compared to the rest of the squad, really. He's not at Bielsa's fitness yet. So he definitely does need a more game time, really. Um, of course, Cam Phillips, though, he's just so important, isn't he, Charles? I mean, there's been a lot of talk about him. You know, he needs to get called up to England. Does he? I'd, I'm not really fussed out of the way with, with regards to that. I'd like it for... I'd like it just be to say we've got a Leeds player in the England squad. Um, he's a Leeds lad. He's from obviously, he's from the area, he's from Wortley. Um, but yeah, I'm not really fussed about him getting called up. He's he's so crucial to our midfield. I felt like if he went off an international duty and got in ahead of Declan Rice, and someone two footed him in an international game, and then he was injured for months. I'd be far, I'd be, I'd, be, I'd be devastated. Yeah. Whereas I mean, I mean, obviously he'll personally want the England call up because every. every uh, English footballer wants to be called up to the international side. Uh, yeah, the midfield looks um, much softer without a minute. They look far, far more permeable, far more easy to get through, um, especially when we're playing Dallas out of position because Dallas has said in interviews himself he doesn't consider himself a centre mid. He's happy to play there and he'll give his all, but he, he's not. that's not his position. And I think we look far weaker without him. Um, yeah, but since he's come back, since he's had the three games of suspended, he's looked much... Uh, well, he's looked a bit more rest. I'm assuming he's, I know he's still been playing kind of youth games and tra- tra- I imagine he'll be training constantly. But he, he looks much more refreshed. He's looking better, and we instantly look 
much better with him back than we did. We looked very suspect without him there. I yeah. think, think in the Forest game in particular, very suspect without him. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah. 100%. Uh, let's move on to the goal then. Of course, the winning goal from Luke Ayling against his former club as well. Came on 16 minutes. Uh, Johnny, it was a bit of a, a scrappy goal, but I mean, to be to be fair to him, good finish in the end. Yeah, it was. This is weak of foot as well. So, yeah, I mean, it was pretty close range. But no, it was a good finish. I mean, I love, I think Ayling's one of those players, even though we're in a bad run of form, he's actually been one of the standout players. Yeah. I think he's, if not well, not, not the best, but one of the best right backs in the league. He gets he gets forward so much, but he's actually good at defending as well. Um, I mean, the goal, yeah, it was scrappy, but I said it, it looked like we were always going to score it. I don't know. The ball just kept ricocheting and coming back to us. Yeah, yeah it was one of those that you usually see in Sunday League, isn't it? Everyone yeah. just having a shot and it just keeps on coming back out and you're yeah. just like, oh, just go in, I just go wa- in, and then it went in. And then everyone's it, buzzing. <laughs> I was watching it thinking, just people saying we don't take our chances. If we don't score here, people are going to be <laughs> yeah. writing about this Absolutely. on social media afterwards. But, uh, yeah. Fortunately, we did score. Good assist from Tausch Click as well. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely didn't mean that. <laughs> no, he didn't. He, didn't. <laughs> <laughs> he, went, yeah. he went to have a shot just just scuffed it, didn't he, I really? Mean, well, yeah, but when he looks in, he looks in and We've really struggled with scoring early on in games, uh, and going one 0 up actually. Not not being yeah. conceding the first goal recently has killed us. Mm. I'm thinking the uh, the Brentford game. We definitely would have won it if we hadn't have conceded that um, mistake from from Kiko and, and Ben Rama tapping it in. Uh, the Forest game, Luke Adam was saying in the interview afterwards that the first goal kind of killed them off, um, which it shouldn't do. But you know, when you're in a bad run of form, it does. Yeah. Um, but it's nice to just go one 0 up and then keep the clean sheet. Or was it that first in like 13 games or something stupid like that? A long time, anyway, since we kept a clean sheet. Yeah, first in 12 games, I think. Uh, I love Luke Hale in celebration after he scored. Uh, of course, he gets his former club, but he celebrates like mad. He, he, he puts the Lee's badge in his mouth, starts biting it, and just runs right in front of the he, away he, fans. He played, like 90, he played like 90 games for him as well. It wasn't like he was there for like 10 or 15 games and then he got bombed out on the, into the transfer list. He was there for 90 games. Yeah. <laughs> so that's like, it's like, what, was that three seasons he was there? And he celebrates like mad. Um, I imagine they, Bristol City fans will hate him for that, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> it, was, it, it was funny. <laughs> he yeah. celebrates loads. He like even if it's not his goal, he'll mm. celebrate loads. It was like the gets Birmingham. Yeah, the Birmingham, the fifth goal is an own goal. Runs off to the yeah. Mbappe. Like, that's <laughs> the home that was good. Yeah, that yeah. was so good. Absolutely fantastic. I think with um, Aylin as well after the the Forest game, he looked broken. He absolutely looked broken, and I think it was it was big of him to come out and say, "Yeah, we haven't played very well there. We need to do something about it." And you can see on the pitch as well. He's like telling everyone like even the crowd on Saturday when I think we missed a, we missed a shot or something he was just turning around to the east and just said calm down yeah. calm down and I think he's he's starting to he's, we, I mean with the last couple of games when it was all going a bit Pete Tong for us we were asking for leaders and I think the uh, seeing Aileen I think we're starting to see a leader with him I think we're seeing a leader with Dallas as well so we're seeing a lot of leaders on the pitch now where we're thinking there's no one with the backbone here yeah, it's really, really good. It uh, looks really promising uh, right now. Of course, uh, we're really dominant in this game, created plenty of chances, as we've as we've mentioned. Jack Harrison at the bar, uh, Patrick Bamford probably should have scored and Helder Costa should have scored, but you know, give credit to uh, Daniel Bentley there. Um, there was a scare, though, towards the end of the game. Naki Wells had played through, hit the side netting. It, it wasn't that far off from scoring, and if it did score, that's Kiko here conceding at his near post again, which... I mean, we can't have a go that him for that because he didn't concede <laughs> no but still it, uh, it was a scare <laughs> yeah when you got strikers who were proving this league like Naki Wells running in through you it was it was actually just a really, was it JJ kind of putting through yeah. um, I think for them uh, and then uh, Wells r- ran onto it uh, but yeah he got uh, quite a bit of abuse off this house and I heard that on the stream <laughs> yeah, he not, he not going to repeat what they said but it was funny <laughs> uh, but yeah and he missed the chance and it would have been an absolute robbery if we hadn't taken three points from that game. Yeah, it, it, so it, lazy, yeah. wouldn't it? It'd have been really like... Won. What, Naki Wells to score <laughs> yeah. against us again? It'd been almost as bad as Cardiff, you know, when we didn't get the three <laughs> points. Yeah. That, that, was, that was rough. Mm. Yeah, he really was. Uh, but, of course, Kiko could say he kept a clean sheet, though, first in 12 since that uh, Tino win uh, over Hull uh, at home back in, uh, I think it was the uh, start of December. Um, you know, great to get a clean sheet. Hopefully it gives him a lot a lot of confidence now. But, I mean, Barney, he didn't have much to do in the game, did he? He didn't have much. No, and that's the point. I mean... We, we we were loving all the clean sheets, but the reason why we were having clean sheets, we, we were I know that it's the old cliche, but we were attacking the best is the best form of defence, and with the game with the games that we've been conceding, we haven't been attacking as much as we we have been. Yeah. So from my point of view, I think that 
with this thing hanging over his head, the FA chair as well, and we might find out tomorrow, hopefully, what's going to happen. I think that's had, had an effect on him as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. He seems to have had a lot on his mind, mm. short on confidence. Um, so, yeah, as, as, as you're saying there, Key Cooks uh, the hearing was uh, today, Wednesday. Hopefully we'll uh, hear about uh, that tomorrow. But, you know, Charles, a lot of people praising Key Cooks here for keeping a clean sheet, but it didn't have much to do. And from what I saw, he misplaced a few passes here and there. And I, I, I still think he looked a, a bit dodgy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's a couple of questionable moments. But the, the, the key start in that game was Bristol City corners none. That was the, that was the big one because yeah. that's where we we concede huge amounts of goals from set pieces and 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 corners in particular. Jesus, the Millwall corner so annoys me now. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the, no no corners. If you don't give away set pieces, this, this team will not likely concede. And especially yeah. with that weather as well on Saturday, yeah. if there was yeah. that, dreadful there was any sort of those set pieces in that weather. Because the, the weather was bad for the weekend game and ball snuck under the bar mm. and there was nothing we could do about it. Um, but yeah, we didn't we didn't give away any corners and we we looked. We look. We normally look solid in open play. There's very few times where we don't look solid in open play. It's yeah. set pieces where you think, well, everyone starts getting nervous, and you start thinking because we've got quite a short team and we're not always the best at marking in the box. I'm sure the players will admit that themselves. They've said that they've got. It Bamford said in an interview before that they've got a little bit of an issue with set pieces. But if we're not giving them away, then you can't you can't concede yeah, exactly, them. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, we it reminded me of how we were playing at the start of the season, Barney. You know, we we've been on such a bad spell, but this game. It does seem like a turning point, doesn't it? We we did seem like we were back to you know how how we know how good we can play. Yeah, definitely. I think I said um, after the um, after the one of the games that we lost. Can't remember which one we lost now. <laughs> but, so uh, many of them. <laughs> um, but I just said that we just all of us need to reset. The players need to reset. The club needs to reset because with some of the tweets from Rads that was awfully timed. Just needs to get off Twitter, doesn't yeah, it? Like yeah. our set pieces, awfully timed. But um, the, also the players needed to reset as well, and we all—I know it sounds really corny, but we all need to be back together again. And you could see that on Saturday, where the, when the team was playing well, and when when the crowds on side as well were a different breed. And I think you could see that as well. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Of course, wouldn't have win uh, for Leeds. Uh, it could have and should have been more probably, but good to get the the three points. And results really did go our way at the weekend, didn't they? West Brom drew two all at home with uh, Nottingham Forest. Uh, Birmingham drew one one uh, with Brentford. Uh, Preston uh, lost uh, to Millwall at home one nil, and Fulham <laughs> got, got battered at home by Barnsley three 0 which is just just it, an incredible weekend, it, Charles. It couldn't have gone better if we'd have rigged the games. <laughs> <laughs> if we'd have paid the referees, we couldn't have got a better result, better results across the leg than that. Yeah, uh, yeah the, particularly the the Fulham Barnsley one isn't just the funniest one on the list. It's probably the most crucial one as well. <laughs> yeah, because it does give us the gap again, which we do need um, because we are always <laughs> about five minutes from disaster. This club, <laughs> in the nicest way possible. Uh, the Millwall one, everyone was kind of saying that was a good result, but Millwall are still around the playoffs themselves, so not it's still not brilliant. Mm, yeah. Um, the Birmingham Brentford one that was that was a good result. I expected. Um, Pep Clotet to do was another favour because particularly um, down at St Andrews they've got they are quite tough to play as we yeah. as we found out and the the Forest uh, West Brom one there was quite a few extremely questionable referee decisions in that game <laughs> yeah there was especially towards the end West Brom could, should have won the game yeah they, really, they, they scored a goal and it was declared offside because one of their players was uh, decked it and was it down injured on Forest goal line yeah, yeah. his agent Carl mm. Bartley he was I mean, agent scored, Carl I, Bartley oh, he scored an own goal <laughs> recently gave away a penalty no he scored an own goal in that Forest game, I think, of the weekend. Yeah, you know, stop them from winning the game on the goal line. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jordan's, uh, yeah, Jordan's probably the best result. Uh, of course, we do remain second in the championship table, four points uh, behind league leaders West Brom and uh, three points uh, clear of uh, third place. You know, the mood's just been lifted, hasn't it? Everyone's just buzzing. I mean, Barney, what what a difference a week makes. I know it's it's fantastic, isn't it? I mean, everyone's on side with each other. Twitter is like a nicer place <coughs> as well nowadays. Um, I th- like I said before, I think we'd all just needed to calm down and just think about where we are, where we are, and it's in our hands again. Yeah, um, it was always in our hands. A bit goal difference. It was, yeah. And uh, the thing is, that it's such a. Cr- I know everyone keeps saying it, but it's such a crazy league this season. No one wants it. <laughs> no one wants it at all. Yeah, I mean, I mean a mid-table team right now could end up winning the league. Exactly. You never know. <laughs> and usually this time, this time of year, you usually see a team that's going to go on a, on a run. It ends up being into the playoffs or going to second but I can't see a team doing that and if I was a Fulham fan or a West Brom fan I'd be losing my head even more because the amount of money they've spent and the players they've got 
And the points that they're dropping. Yeah, exactly. I yeah. mean, can you imagine if we dropped three points against Barnsley at home? Yeah. Yeah. We dropped three points at home can against you, Cardiff, didn't yeah. we? Can, two you, points yeah, but can you imagine if we lost 3-0 at home to Barnsley? Then? Yeah. <laughs> There'd been some words. I mean, it did feel like we did lose 3 0 to Cardiff at home, really. To be fair. We didn't lose the game. Though. I know, but it felt like mm. it. It felt yeah, like it. It felt like we'd lost the Champions League <laughs> final at the time, then. <laughs> it did. It did. Um, of course, now the only team Leeds have left to play uh, this season who are currently in the top six is Fulham. That's a home game 18th of March. Um, so, we've got a fairly easy running now, Charles. Don't Majority of that, games mate. are at Don't home. <laughs> <laughs> we lost to Wigan. <laughs> we can lose to anybody. Yeah. That's the worst part about this league is that the fixtures are irrelevant. Yeah. They really don't matter all because anyone can beat anyone. It's not like the, like you, you'd never see Liverpool losing three 0 at home to Norwich, would you? That just doesn't happen. But Fulham just lost three 0 at home to Barnsley, so you get very weird results. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think Bristol City have a really hard run in. West Brom play nearly all the top six as well, so if they could do us a favour and just beat everybody, that'd be great. Because <laughs> I don't really care if we win the league; I just want to come top two. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've we've got the. In quotation marks, easiest running because um, <laughs> I think we've still got the bottom five to play. Mm. I think in, yeah. in either home or away, which is probably is it harder to play a bottom five or well, to try to get into the top six? Well, I'd rather play. I'd rather play the bottom bottom half teams mm. than the higher up teams. The higher up teams play football, which suits our style much yeah, better. Yeah, it does. That's yeah. the thing, isn't it? Yeah. We, we cannot. We always put in better performances against teams that actually play football. The the anti football teams, the Cardiffs, your Wigan's. Are the ones that the Millwalls are the ones we struggle against. Yeah. So even Wigan last season, like they were fighting for relegation, and then that was what really stopped us from getting automatic. Mm. So yeah. that's very true. Yeah, like but on on paper though, it, it does look oh, fairly yeah, easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's Charlton on the last day, and if they've got to fight for something, then, yeah, and oh, that's, that's I keep horrible. saying to everyone, you need to look at Charlton's results now to make sure they're safe because if they're playing as Last home oh yeah, yeah. I hope I hope they I hope they stay. Oh, and Lee Bowyer does us a favour. Yeah. Agent Bowyer, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Agent Bowyer. <Bullier. laughs> but he's he, he's a he's a Charlton lad as well. Didn't we get him from Charlton? So yeah, he'll 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 want to do well with them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, of course, Leeds United move on to uh, Reading at home this Saturday. We'll preview that game later on in the show. Uh, but first, uh, let's look at some uh, of on the ongoings at Ellen Road this week. And it's been a fairly quiet week, to be honest. Uh, the Leeds United Under-23s haven't played this week. They were meant to take on Burnley away uh, from home on Monday, but that game was uh, postponed uh, due to the uh, weather conditions. A new date for that will be announced in due course. Uh, Charles, it's quite fortunate that that was postponed because, of course, they won the last game in the PDL to go 11 league games on B. And it would have been great, you know, for them to go out straight away and just extend that run. Yeah, they've had um, after a very kind of questionable start to the yeah. season. They had a, they've had a massive uptick in form, and um, they're kind of fighting for the, um, the for the title again because they obviously they won it last season. And um, I, I really I, I really want us to get become a category one academy because I was I want us to go into PL two. That'd be brilliant yeah. if we we could compete with the Premier League youth teams. But obviously we've got to change certain things about the youth setup and the training ground and put a few 3G pitches in and other administrative weird things that the <laughs> FA need you to do to be Category 1. Um, so you, but yeah, and then we'll be able to attract um, more and better players and it'll just it'll all go up from there. I'm very hopeful for it. I think I think the lads will do well this season again. Yeah, of course, we're second in the PDL North right now uh, after uh, Paul Start, as you mentioned. We're just a few points behind, uh, behind uh, leaders Nottingham Forest uh, who we play next Monday. So uh, that's, a, that's a very big game. Top two clash, yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Yeah, so am I. Uh, of course, the next game, though, is this Friday, 21st February, uh, to take on Wolves in the Premier League Cup, with a game being played at Bootham Crescent in uh, York again. It's a 7 pm kickoff, so that'll be a good one to watch. Um, on some news, then, uh, as we discussed last week, uh, 28 year old, 28 year old uh, midfielder Adam Forshaw uh, was to travel to the uh, Stedman Clinic in Colorado, United States, to undergo hip surgery, uh, which would rule him out for the rest of the season. Well, he's had that, the operation's done, and it uh, went well by the sounds of things. Uh, of course, he's out for the the rest of the season, uh, but you'd hope that Johnny, you'd, be, you'd hope that he'd be able to play for Leeds again because you know he is a good player to have, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he is. I mean, he was in the team consistently at the start of the season, and I mean, even though he, I don't think he scored for Leeds in the league or the cup, I think he scored in pre-season. I think he got one goal in pre-season, but he's actually a really, really like consistent and influential player in our side. He was playing in that. I think Phillips was in that holding role, and it was him and Click. Um, where Pablo and Costa sort of are now, and he was even though he wasn't scoring, he was still creating chances. He's like that box to box midfielder with click as well. So I mean, he's a big loss, but with Roberts back, who obviously we didn't have at the start of the season, with Paveda coming in, hopefully we can 
sort of we don't miss him too much. But yeah. no, he's he's going to be a big miss because he was really good at the start of the yeah. season. And the question is, how long is Roberts going to be going to be in for? Because he always oh. seems to get injured, doesn't he? Uh, but Forster, he had, a, he had a fantastic start to the season, didn't he, Barney? And you know, he is a good option to have, and it, it will be a big miss heading into the running, won't he? I think he will because there were certain games during the course of this season where we needed Roberts, where just he just got the foot on the ball and just calm it down a little bit because we like lost our heads a little bit in midfield in some in some games, and um, everyone was during the transfer window was talking about we need a striker, we need, we need a centre back or something like that. But for me, we we are so short in midfield. Yeah. It showed with when Phillips was out, we didn't have a natural midfielder. Yeah, and Forshaw is kind of you know he's not the perfect replacement, but for those three games where Calvin Phillips was uh, just suspended for, I think Forshaw would have been great in that role, wouldn't he? Yeah, it? exactly. And it, it's it's it may, it's it's frustrating for, from a um, fan's point of view as well because it's we've been set. How long has he been out for? He, there's not been a lot of talk about his injury. There's not been a lot of communication. I mean, Bielsa just keeps saying the same old thing. He's coming back, he's back on the grass, and the next thing he breaks down again. And I just think, why have we left it so long to say, right, you need to go for surgery? I mean, he could have gone for surgery e- e- earlier, and we could have got him back for a, a few games, hopefully. It's just a little bit frustrating that we've left it so late for, him yeah. to go to, for, for surgery. Yeah, I mean, Johnny, it is quite stupid from the club, isn't it, to leave it so late? Because we knew that he needed you know, some sort of surgery at some point, you know, many many months ago, Charles, you were talking about last week, and you know, why didn't we just pull the trigger on the surgery a lot earlier and then have him back for this stage? I've got no idea, no idea to be honest. I mean, it's it's just frustrating because now he can't even be well. He's not going to be back to the end of the season. He yeah, might exactly. Play the last few games, but may not see him in the lead shirt again if yeah, we end up going well, up. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, he. I think he is in on his Instagram. He said, "Oh, I look forward to seeing you all in the Premier League and stuff." But. I mean, I, no doubt he could do it in the Premier League, but then he's got to get back up to match fitness. And you know, Bielsa likes his players mm. to be fully fit. Yeah, that's so it, exactly, it's yeah. going to take him so yeah. long. But yeah, I mean, it's just, I don't know what they were hoping on. I don't know if it's like a fresh injury from the one he was then recovering from. No. I mean, nothing's really been disclosed from it. But yeah, it's, it, it'd be, it would have been nice to have him back. But yeah, hopefully we've got the reinforcements. He's actually really so. nice on Instagram because if he puts a story on, you send him a message, he replies back to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He replied back to me like, He's replied back to me. What's he doing? I don't know if he replied to the tweet where they said, "Oh, he's gone off skiing for the holidays." You see on Twitter because he's in the snow. I don't know if that's a joke or like that's actually serious. But, I mean, yeah. he's a scouse, Adam. He's got. I imagine I've got a sense of humour with regards to that. Um, yeah, he says it's been a really difficult part of his career. I imagine it has been. It must be really frustrating. Yeah, absolutely. To get every week, get back on the grass, and then your hip gives out, mm. and you, yeah, yeah, because it always seems like he's about to come back, but then he just gets injured again. Mm. And also being out with injury when the team's doing so well as well, yeah. Charles. Yeah, that. I don't know what would be worse: whether you're missing the team when they're playing really well, or not being able to help the team when they're in a bad stretch of form. I imagine bad stretch of form would be worse because then if you're attending games and your team's winning, it, it must make that. That kind of distance, being in the injury room a lot, and being on your own with physios a, lot, a bit, a little bit easier because you're yeah. still, you're still winning games and you're still chatting with the lads and everyone's in a good mood. But when you know, when we go through a bad patch through January, which is what we did do, and I imagine it, it must be really frustrating that you can't get out there and, particularly when we were, were, were like as we are in midfield, it must be really frustrating to not be able to get on the pitch. Yeah, and he's been in that situation before with promotion as well to get out of this league, so it'd be, mm. it'd be good to have a round. Just a bit of experience about just lo- don't you lose your idea and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, he's yeah, it, a, a really solid player to have, and it's really unfortunate how his season has gone there. Um, but it's good that the surgery's gone well. Hopefully, uh, he does have a good recovery. Good luck to uh, Tim in uh, his recovery. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, Keith Cox uh, his hearing today uh, was today uh, for the uh, FA ban uh, for alleged racism. We'll find out more about that uh, on uh, Thursday. Um, and finally, Leeds fans can now uh, purchase tickets in the West Stand section below the away fans of Saturday's game uh, against Reading, as the uh, Reading fans have not sold out their allocation. Uh, this is, of course, great news for Leeds fans. You get more Leeds fans in the door, but it's back to huge debate, hasn't it? Um, people complaining the fact that that we charge £40 £40 for away fans to come tell them about I mean Charles they have a point don't they £40 is ludicrous I I don't agree with the, the pricing at all I often think it's idiotic on I mean it might be a bit strong the phrase that but if, on the part of the club for for pricing it that high because you could get if you get more people in we could fill the stadium up and we could have a better atmosphere and the, the club would probably if you figured it out make more money if they dropped it down to 30 quid or like 28 or something like that you get a lot more away fans and the club in total would make a lot more money it would make up the difference it doesn't make any sense for me while we're having 10 guys and a dog paying 40 quid when we could have you know 
a thousand away fans all paying 28 29 quid it, it's yeah. a, it seems a bit ludicrous to me i mean obviously the premier league's got the 30 pound cap um mm. but obviously we get a lot more tv money up there i think the cl- obviously the club will try to just fight by saying we get absolutely rinsed on tv money which we do given the amount of times we're on sky so we've got to make up the difference to pay for the players we've got pay the wages pay the staff i understand that but it does seem a bit excessive. I mean, I think it's us and Wednesday who really rip off everyone in this league for... <clears throat> and we beat Hillsborough. It's not that great of a ground to stand in no. for the amount of money you're paying. Um, it was a good experience because um, we drew, but it was... It's it's still... It, yeah, and we get charged a lot because we... Cause the club charge a lot for other away fans. Yeah, so. well, you shouldn't be paying more than thirty quid anywhere for a football ticket to a second division side. Yeah, I mean we had you we just had, shouldn't. Yeah, you had that thing a few years ago, didn't didn't you? That uh, campaign twenty is plenty. Um, Johnny, how much do you think away tickets should cost? I mean, I only go to the home games. I'm not, you know, fortunate enough to get like, away season yeah. ticket. Well, all, all games, tickets. But I mean, yeah, I think twenty is plenty. I mean, yeah. I. With obviously memberships, you get discounts if you're a certain age, and but I mean we charge like the, one of the highest season tickets in the league probably, um, but I mean, yeah, twenty is plenty. Any more than that is just I mean Allen Road as well, it's a great stadium, but there are sometimes like those pillars or like boulders which mm-hmm. the away um, away fans have to sort of sit through, and it's it's not a great view either. From yeah, that well it is falling either. apart, isn't it, for stadium? Really, we do definitely yeah. need development on, yeah. on the stadium. Yeah. And particularly the West Ham. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, well. Barney, would you agree? Twenty, twenty-five quid for a ticket. It's, it's enough, right? I'm on the, on the other side of the fence, to be honest. I yeah. think we need to need to understand because some of, some of these clubs have come down. They've got parachute payments, so they can rely on that money coming into the, the club. Um, from my point of view. With, it's 40 quid I mean we have to pay 40 quid there was some someone put a tweet out today saying the Reading fans can't afford 40 quid and then they've got to get a train for 120 quid or whatever yeah. but Leeds fans they went to Fulham they paid 35 quid they had mm. to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning for a 1 o'clock kick off yeah. so I think a lot of fans have like jumped on how much it is for a Leeds United away ticket but I think if you look at the rest of the league, like Sheffield Wednesday, QPR is one of the worst, Fulham's one of the worst. But some of the clubs, it's probably 20, 25 quid. It's clubs like Luton that's just come come up. So yeah. I think you've got to look at it from that point of view. 20 is, pl- is, uh, is what, 20 is? 20 is plenty. Bit of a mouthful, <laughs> though, <isn't> it? <laughs> I think it, w- it would work in the Premier League because the, the, the tickets, I mean, you could actually fill a stadium up and just say it's a quid a ticket because they don't actually make that I think, much I money. I think the top six would probably just say, right, it's free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we make that much money. I mean, money they might as well. They're not going to get people nice. coming in anyway. Yeah, just, it's free. Just but come I, in. I, I think it didn't help either because the way the club tweeted saying, yeah. the away fans haven't come again, so you've got some tickets available. Yeah. I think that came across a little bit cocky. But from also as well is that if the, if home fans are gonna who can't get a ticket they're gonna pay forty quid, how much are they gonna spend on that day as well? So they'll go into the club shop as well. Yeah. So it's quite a savvy way of doing it because you're still filling up the ground and people are still willing to pay forty quid as a home fan that's yeah. probably gonna spend another forty fifty quid in the shop or something. Not just the shop, but they got the pints and cups of teas and yeah. pies and stuff in the stand if you, you get served yeah. I mean if you, if you get served <laughs> I mean if you, if you plan it right then you go just about on about 42 minutes and you get yeah. down there yeah. go, go, go to the toilet that's what I normally do yeah. just I mean, before half time yeah. to be fair it's actually got better in the south stand to be honest it's got a lot more people behind the bars which is good um, but yeah I mean it's fantastic for, away, for, for home fans but for away fans I mean you, you know you're paying 40 quid and then you know you've got, you got your travel food and drink you're paying probably over 100 quid for just one person so mm-hmm. I, I, I do think it's quite a lot of money I get your point Barney but I, I just think 40 quid's, quid's too much we, you know 40 pounds is too much if it's not printing us on the TV money then we could do the 20 as plenty <laughs> yeah that's true that's mm. the other argument yeah that's very true uh, well before we look ahead to uh, Leeds United's next game let's uh, find out a little bit more about I guess uh, uh, Barney and uh, Johnny so as we always do on this podcast uh, whenever we've got someone coming on for the first time we like to find out you know, a little bit more about them where the journey started supporting Leeds so Johnny we'll start with you first where, where, where did it all begin for you What, what, what was your, what's your earliest memory supporting Leeds do you remember your first game yeah it was well I mean it was awful I mean I'm only 18 so and you can tell I'm from down south I'm, <laughs> but my mum is from Leeds and my dad supports Leeds so that's so why I'm in up, but 
my first proper season, it was like when I was like eight or nine, it was the 2010-11, so I mean, quite a bit of glory hunter when we got promoted back to the championship, <laughs> but it was, I think the first game was Cardiff at home and we lost 4-0 or something, <laughs> and it was like Craig Bellamy, Jay Bothroyd, I was like 2-0 oh. down, I was thinking, God, can we go now, this is awful. I remember that, I think I was on holiday then and I watched it on TV, yeah, in, somewhere in Turkey or whatever. So, so I was the worst like, scene that Leeds lose while you're abroad, is the Yeah, and you got a, ba- <laughs> no, you know, a bar full of like other fans who yeah, just, exactly. they just love it when Leeds lose, yeah. <laughs> But um, to be fair, that season, I think I went to the Norwich 2 draw that season where David Sommer scored with like, his first touch of the game. Uh, that was good, but I mean, I haven't really grown up and seen that much. I mean, last season was the best season I've seen um, and just you know how it ended wasn't great. But yeah, that was my first game, so could only really got better. And my record at Leeds is awful as well. I think I've seen like 41 games. I've got notes on my phone and I've, we've lost 21 or something like that, 20. And I'm going to the Reading game on Saturday, so if we lose, oh, then... Oh, Jesus. Oh, stay away, stay away. Feel free, stay to, away. To, feel free, to, feel free to put the blame on me. Uh, what's your best memory supporting Leeds, Johnny? What, what, what's the thing that sticks out to you? Um, Is it last season? Last season was good. I think the the away leg at Derby was, was really good. Even though I didn't go, just watching on TV and, and the home leg. Even Dallas's... Dallas' first goal, I was thinking, well, we've done it now. I almost didn't celebrate it as much. And that, I've, yeah, I know exactly. I'm laughing because I thought exactly the same. Yeah, exactly. I think it was inconceivable did. to me that we yeah. would not win that game. Everyone yeah. did. And then <laughs> I celebrated way more for his equaliser because I thought we'd blown it. And I thought we were back into it. But I mean, one of the games I've actually been to, or the the Brighton 2 0 when Wood, sc- Wood scored twice, that was, that was a good game. But I think my best game I've seen live was 2 0 against Aston Villa when. Heidi Sacco didn't square it to Chris Wood. <laughs> yeah. And then it sort of ran it on the goal. And that's the best I've seen. Was so that I mean, uh, Roof's first goal for Leeds? Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that was a good one. Takara's like actually. a whip cross off the left hand side. That's a great, <laughs> great goal, that was. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was his first goal. So. I remember that game. I was in cheese wedge for that. I was in the yeah. cop. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good atmosphere that there. So. Yeah, I yeah. loved it. I loved it. Uh, what are your thoughts on Marcel Bielsa then? Oh, that's the best manager I've seen completely. <laughs> Probably. You know, Simon Grayson was second best, and then you look at like Steve Evans and other ones like that, Darko <laughs> Melani. Yeah. So. You can't put Steve Evans third. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm trying to think of who else there was, but no, Marcelo Bielsa's is the best manager I've seen. He's got us actually playing proper football, you know, not hoof ball like we used to have. Um, but yeah, he's, he's amazing. He's, yeah. He turned players like even Roof when he was there. Phillips was, you know, I think that summer, the summer before he came, people were rumouring that. Phillips might leave for three million or so. Well, people would rather Phillips leave than Ronaldo Vieira back then. Exactly, yeah. And I when Vieira... I've, I've always been a big fan. I know you're a big fan. Really? Oh, yeah. Really? Really? I know, now, now 100%. <laughs> but when Vieira went for like seven million or so, I was thinking, oh, so that means Phillips and then Click will come in as well. And they're sort of unknown, but he's changed the whole squad. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. last season it was only Douglas and Roberts really who weren't wasn't there in Bamford yeah. I mean he, he, he turned an average squad into you know fantastic players you know that's his first season as well we're, we're having another fantastic season this yeah. this season as well yeah. aren't we I mean it is it is a case of, I think if we don't go up this season then he mm. probably goes which is yeah, why I think goes, yeah. yeah which is why even through the losses we're still playing well that Wigan game we should have won Sheffield Wednesday we should have taken something so I think we just got to enjoy it and mm. pray that he's still here next season in the yeah. Premier League. One hundred percent, Barney Fuden. Where, where did it all begin? Sporting Leeds for you? Well, my first ever game was I'm showing my age now. Uh, Man City came to Ellen Road for the Rumbelows Cup. Um, for what cup? The Rumbelows Cup. It was <laughs> what a is league. That? It was the League <laughs> Cup. The League oh. Cup. Oh, not the Carabao. Um, <laughs> and I. That was the first ninety minutes. I fell in love with Leeds and a certain player, David Batty. And he scored as well, which he doesn't obviously score that often. Yeah, he got four in his career, didn't he? For yeah, Leeds. I was um, in the cop. I was eight or nine, I think I was. So I was right at the back of the cop, and that's when the cop was like mm-hmm. awful place to be. When especially when you're eight or nine years old, <laughs> <laughs> and there was a guy behind me um, kept um, slagging off Mel Sterling all game. Get him off! Get him off! But he actually got man of the match that game as well, I think, in the end. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I and then I went, th- I've gone through the years of being in the Champions League as well. Yeah. So going to Ellen Road when we're playing AC Milan and hearing the Champions League music and you're in the cop and you, you just think, you st- stood there hearing that music, you think, we've made it. And then a few years down the line... <laughs> In League One. Yeah. <laughs> you can't make it up, can you? Yeah. What, what's your best memory then, Sporting Leeds? Best memory 
was um, it was during the O'Leary era, and uh, I had a season because the majority of the time I've always been in the cop. Um, I always will be. I don't like the south stand. Do you not? No, I've been in a couple of times. Just I like it. Fair not, enough. Not for me. Um, yes, yeah, so I was in the cop and we were playing derby, and uh, we were three one down at half time, and it was we were like, what is happening here? Then the best comeback I've seen when the the fourth goal went in from Lee Bowyer, Hasselbank crossed it in and um, lost my voice that game. And then me and my mate went out into Harrogate. And we got home about four o'clock in the morning. I was rough that, that <laughs> the next day as well. That was a time when you could actually go to a pub at 16, 17 and no one would, would question anything. Really? There were some really decent pubs around um, Beeston as well at that time. A lot of them are closed down now, but there were some really good pubs. Mm. I mean, you wouldn't go in there just for a drink during the week, but on match days there were, there were really good pubs to go to. Yeah. And Bielsa as well. You've you've met him a few times, haven't I you? I have. He's Honestly, he's God. He is God. He is. Um, strangely, I was watching something on YouTube the other night, and they were talking about the Rebbe era and how uh, tactically astute he was. And there's a lot of parallels between Revy and Bielsa, where it, it, uh, Revy was always about bringing youth through to the, into the first team, um, the, the training methods. It was always always about diet. And if you actually, I mean, the, the today we actually beat Man, Man United five one in seventy four, and we we got that label as dirty leads, but we actually played some really really good football, and people for, seem to forget that. And you see a lot of parallels of how Revy played football and also how Bielsa is. Just Bielsa, I mean, what he's done, it, it just shows you don't need to spend a silly a lot of money to get a team out of this division. It's yeah. just all about being a good coach. Yeah, 100%. Um, I'll put you on spot then. Are we going up this season? Yes, we are. Yeah? Yeah, and I still think there's going to be a few t- twists and turns along the way. And I, I just think that after that, the setback we've had in January, I think that the, the, the team have realised we can't, we can't dick around with the playoffs, can we? <laughs> we so, can't dick them out so with the playoffs I just, anymore. I just, um, oh God! <laughs> <laughs> I knew can hear curses as soon as you said that. <laughs> I just, I just think, I don't know, but I've got a feeling we're going to go up as champions. Big call, that big call. Oh, call that. Johnny, are we going up? I mean. I say based on the run of four, or the running we've got, uh, I'd like I'm gonna say yes, but I mean I thought that last season when we were what two 0 up against Derby and then it somehow we threw it away. So you about, know, about five games to go and we just ruined it. <laughs> and he was after that last season's Sheffield Wednesday win, and that was before Wigan. It was yeah, the one where Jack Harrison yeah, scored. Yeah. Won, we won it one nil, and we thought yeah, this is done. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I think Sheffield United lost to Millwall that day as well. I think or drew to mm. them. But I mean, yeah, I'll obviously, I want us to go up, and yeah, I, th- I think we will. But it wouldn't surprise me if it's like playoffs. But I'd actually rather go up through the playoffs than second. I wouldn't. I think, oh, no, no. I think I'd, I like second to be honest. I'd, I'd love, I'd love a day at Wembley and just celebrating like that because yeah, more money. We've never you, think. ever won a playoff ever. No. First time for everything. I guess we've got to <laughs> never win in London either. So no, oh yeah, no. actually true. London, no, yeah, losing to different. Derby, <laughs> losing to Millwall, losing to Donny. Losing to Donny in the oh, final. <laughs> <laughs> Not doing that again. Yeah. Second. I'll have second. No, yeah, first or second, I'll take yeah. it. So you got yeah. what I said. I'd much rather go up second and get no trophies than a day out of Wembley yeah. and win a trophy. 100% there. Yeah. Uh, well, let's now uh, move on to uh, Legion United's next game. It's against Reading at Ellen Road this Saturday. It's a 3 pm kickoff. Uh, Charles, this is surely you win this, isn't it? This 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 has massive shares of the Wigan game there. When we were pre- previewing that, <laughs> they um, but Reading have nothing to play for. The table, yeah, they are mid table, and they beat uh, Wednesday three 0 at Hillsborough last game out. And that was really funny. But um, Sheffield Wednesday have been on a massive <laughs> massive downfall oh, really. So I, I want them to get that deduction so badly. I really do. <laughs> I want I want Monk to take them down. That would be the perfect scenario. <laughs> if they were to get relegated with Gary Monk as manager, that would be perfect. <laughs> uh, yeah. We've um, obviously that one nil down at their place early in the season with that um, rapid counter attack Jack Harrison goal, with that cross from Costa. Um, but they they were they I remember them playing quite well in that game. They were hard yeah. to break down. I mean, it was last minute winner, wasn't it? So yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm a bit wary of them. But you know, playing Reading is just 
the most championship fixture going. <laughs> Nobody wants to play Absolutely. them. They're just so boring. Yeah. <laughs> they must bland the club in this league. Yeah, I mean, they really are poor side. Inconsistent team, on poor form at the moment. The 21st in the uh, form table over the last eight games. Uh, in the last eight league <laughs> games, they've, they've drawn four, <laughs> lost three, and won just one. That was, of course, against Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, the 15th in the league table, 42 points, so mid-table finish for them. Um, this season, I mean, there were some you know, decent players. Charlie Adam, he, he, he was good back in the he, day. He's about fifty-five. <laughs> <laughs> uh, got a uh, striker, George Puskas, as well. Of course, twenty-three-year-old uh, scored nine uh, goals in all competitions this season. Eight in the league. Uh, but yeah, Matt, Matt Bowen side. I mean, they're, they're, Barney, they're just overall they're just average, aren't they? They're, they're, they're a side that no one wants to play. <laughs> they just, yeah, they just. I don't know how to ex- describe them. Like, like you say, they're just really bland. They're just. <laughs> Matt I mean, Bowen, this is the guy that appointed himself. Yeah, I, know, I was just going to say <laughs> he was sporting director. Or something, it's like, it? oh yeah. no, I'm, I'm sacking you. You're not doing a good enough job. Who, who are we going to get in? Oh me. me. <laughs> it's like basically um, getting rid of Bielsa and, and also says, "I'll do it. I'll tell you what. I'll do it. I'll do it." Yeah. I just, I don't. They were really hard to break down because we were quite surprised, weren't we, in the first half an hour, forty minutes, because we thought we were just going to blitz them. But yeah, like last season, being three 0 away, so. and they they. <laughs> they did play very much like a, a stamp um, reading as well, where they'd like to do a lot of passing, but it's just sideways and backwards. They were not attractive. They, there was one guy who, who Phillips had, um, had a bit of trouble with at first. Ajaria. Yeah. Yeah. He Let's had a bit. Of, Liverpool's academy. He had a bit of pace about him, and we did we did struggle to keep track of him. But other than that, I think it's going to be another edgy game. Um, but as long as we score first, we're going to be okay. Yeah. I mean, Johnny, we should be winning this, shouldn't we? Should be, yeah. I mean, you go through Reading's team, I oh, don't recognise any of them. Yeah, I mean, they've got Mate. <laughs> like, who are you? <laughs> Mate's all right up front. I think he's their top scorer, but I mean, it's just the typical championship fixture that's there really for us to lose. Mm. It is, but I think, I mean, the last time we really gave someone a hiding was Middlesbrough at home. And I'd love to see just another 3 or 4 nil, just put the chances away. Mm. But yeah. yeah, I agree. Just get that first goal. I think we should be okay. They've got Yadam, don't they, who used to play for Barnsley. Yeah, Heckingbottom wanted yeah. him at Leeds. Mm. And then. Yeah, that, that's that's the only one of their players I can just immediately think of. Yeah. I remember him being quite good in that last game as well. Yeah, it was decent. Yeah. Um, of course, let's have a look at uh, whoscored.com. Oh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, red uh, characteristics. So, they are very strong at protecting the lead. They are strong at uh, shooting from direct free kicks, strong at creating long shot opportunities and strong at creating chances through individual skill. Don't know that that's, 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 just, that's, that's just playing football, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, the weak at finishing scoring chances, like us. Uh, weak at defending against skillful players, and very weak at defending against long shots. So let's just—we don't take any long shots, though. No. But skill, no. we've, got, we've got a couple of skillful players, so yeah. Harrison and Costa might give him a bit of trouble. Hernandez, yeah. maybe. We'll, we'll see. I hope, we ju- I hope we just score in the first half. I reckon if we go in, we'll win the game. Yeah, one hundred percent. Whereas if we concede a crappy corner in like the twentieth minute, then oh. we, <laughs> and then we're struggling all game to get back into it. Then we might struggle a bit. Yeah. Uh, Reading style of play to take long shots, attack through the middle, take a lot of shots, playing in their own half, and uh, opponents play aggressively half. against them. It's not really a style of play. play aggressively <laughs> against them. Is that because they're playing a football match in a professional league? Yeah, I mean, how's that <laughs> Reading style of play as well? Because the opponents <laughs> play against them aggressively. <laughs> they play in their own half. How are they meant to score? They're playing, their own, <laughs> <half>. <laughs> yeah. they're playing their own half because they're a bad team. Yeah. I mean, bad his teams playing their own half. That's yeah. where the long shots come from. Yeah, yeah, yeah the halfway line. Fifty yard screen. Yeah, yeah Dom. <laughs> I mean, newscore.com is just crap, isn't it? It's just, it's just dreadful. <laughs> uh, Leeds, of course, unbeaten in the last two, uh, one draw, one win. Um, Barney, we just need to build on that, don't we? Build, build on that, build some momentum, get a good run going into the running and, and just focus on ourselves, really, don't we? Yeah, exactly. Um, even Ailing said now it's it's a little mini-season now. So we, we know we can go on a run. We know we can go on seven or eight runs uh, um, winning games. So we just need to know we can do that again. Yeah. And I think the confidence we got from the Bristol game and also the way we played against Brentford, who who we thought Brentford was going to be one of our toughest games where we just played them off the park. So I think the confidence is back there. Um, and also, if we keep this first 11 like we did last time, hopefully that'll work. Yeah, 100%. And of course, Leeds have a good record uh, against Reading, unbeaten in the last four meetings. Uh, one draw in there, two, uh, three wins there, rather. Uh, of course, in the last 11 meetings, we've uh, won six, drawn three, and lost just two. Uh, we did a double of them last season, of course, uh, beating them 1 0 away in November earlier on this season. Uh, so, Charles, will we uh, do the double of them again this season? Well, what's your score prediction? You'd like to think so, wouldn't you? I think we will. I think I, I think 2 0 Leeds. I think you've got to go for a comprehensive. Uh, Optimistic 2-0. 2-0. <laughs> 2-0 win. Yep. Johnny? 
I was going to go two, no, but I'll, I'll go three. I think pa- I, I hope Patrick Bamford scores. I, I mean, well. I'd, I'd take a one 0 when Bamford scores rather than I think four or five. I just think to get him or Augustine to see him score. I think that would kick him on massively. I, w- I wouldn't well. do that if you offered me a four or five 0 win when Bamford does not score. I would rather have that one than a one 0 win. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd like to. I just, game. I just, <laughs> just hope, for goal difference purposes. Yeah. I just hope he can have another positive performance with a goal. Yeah, I think that'll be great for his confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Barney score prediction. I think it's going to be an edgy one 0 one nil. Yeah, oh, I like that. Probably, probably the most accurate one. Too, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be, looking back be, on yeah. that, thinking, yeah, he was probably right. Yeah. No, I'll go two nil. I'll, I'll, I'll go with, you, with your score prediction, Charles. Two nil to Leeds United. Hopefully, we will pick up uh, the result uh, this weekend. Uh, but that does bring us uh, to the end of episode fifty-five of the All Things Leeds podcast. Thank you very much as always to Charles for joining me in the studio. Thanks for having me on, there. And uh, thank you very much as always to uh, Johnny and uh, Barney as well for joining us. Really do appreciate you guys coming in. No, thanks for having us on. No, thanks for having us. Cheers. Yeah, really do appreciate it. Uh, of course, thanks to uh, everyone uh, who has listened or watched uh, as well. If you enjoyed them, why not subscribe or follow the podcast? Give us a five star rating uh, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts. Uh, share it around as well. Make sure to follow All Things Leeds on social media. Uh, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Search Paul Things Leeds 1 on Twitter and Instagram. Search Paul Things Leeds uh, on Facebook. Subscribe to your YouTube channel as well. Search All Things Leeds on there. Uh, follow Johnny on Twitter as well. What's your handle? I think it's Johnny Chick with two underscores, one underscore, two underscores, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Barney, what's your handle? Barney two underscore twenty one. Brilliant. Make sure to uh, to follow uh, everyone here. Uh, Charles and I will be back next week. We'll be back a little bit earlier next week as we usually record these podcasts on Wednesday evenings, but of course next Wednesday night, Leeds United are playing away at Millsborough, so we won't be recording then. We'll be recording on Monday, so we'll be with you a little bit earlier next week. So for now, take care and we'll speak to you soon. <laughs>